Hello, welcome to Beth Roars, where we look at your favourite singers to find out what makes them them. Before we start, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. My handle is at Beth Roars and I hold loads of votes on my Instagram. You guys can vote on who I react to. Also, please do check out my website, bethroars.com, where you can book a singing lesson from me. And last but not least, head over to my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash bethroars, where you can get more exclusive content, including early access to my podcast, which is Good Job with Beth Roars. You find that in all the podcast places, Spotify, Google Play, Apple, Acast. This one is a request from one of my patrons, Brian. Hey, I've been chatting to him loads on the Patreon chat and I'm excited to listen to this one. I have done previous videos of Camelot but not this song and I've heard it's a bit of a masterpiece. From our album Karma, this song is about vanity, it's about beauty, Mm, it's about growing old, Mm. it's about evil. This song is called Evil. Elizabeth. Whoa. I was like, I know all these things, and the evil, I was like, oh. I hope I don't know too much evil. I love this shot, though. Oh my god, it's gonna be like a whole story. It's gonna be fantastic. It's really like interesting in place, but he's letting it be quite tight sounding basically, um, which gives him this kind of aged sound so that he sounds like he's growing old I guess which is interesting I he has that forward placement that he normally uses which punches through which is an ah, ah, that sort of place or a slightly warmer place than that but he yeah I really interesting oh beautiful head voice Oh my god, brilliant use of dynamics, of swells. Ah, It's beautiful and light, big vibrato. Ah, ah. These little kind of cry scoops with a crescendo, which means from going quiet to loud, back to quiet again. Oh. She sounds like a mermaid. It's light, it's got an edge of breath. Super well controlled. I didn't think you'd sing this sort of thing, it's beautiful. Once I saw up the servant, she's a virgin, free from sin. It's so theatrical. It's like he's got two different voices here. He's like, I'm the mermaid, I'm the old man telling you the story. I love it. It's like I'm watching a movie. Drops of blood caress me He's got the tension in his jaw So he's obviously using this for like character effect I would be careful of using jaw tension Because that 
can hinder you, especially as you get higher. And you hear and you see when he gets on those high notes, everything is completely released and free and easy. It's purposeful tension. You have to be so careful. You have to be so in control of your voice to use that. Could this be the answer? The corrupted, common red. Voices mm. keep From chest and then a flip, but in a really. That top note was really towards head voice, but instead of being a completely light ethereal place, he added a little bit of forward placement. He made sure he had full chord closure. He had the perfect amount of breath coming through. These are the things that you need to keep a consistent tone. Then that gave him that kind of punchy, punchy sort of sound rather than it being like operatic -y. <laughs> So this is a guy who clearly trains a lot. He knows his mix. At some point he has worked on his mix or he could be one of those lucky like few percent. I'd say 95% of us are not born with a great mix. Most of the people, I certainly wasn't. And then I get like a 5% of people who are like, oh yeah, it's easy, I know how to do this. This is where my voice naturally sits. But for most of us, we have our chest voice, a kind of gap into our head voice. So chest voice is this place where you speak through low. And if you go woo, 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 into this light head voice, hey, up here. If you're talking like an old grandma or woohoo, party noises, that's head voice. If you want uh, like a consistent tone to slide through instead of uh, so how that flips there then you have to learn this mix which he has been working on and he would have had to have do have done daily practice on that daily 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 practice a routine a vocal routine is important in this type of singing and this type of control he's having a little nap though you're allowed to nap rest relaxation is good for the voice I love how in this style of music you just have these really mysterious little sections. feel like is like his voice this is what i always think of as his voice is kind of mid-range warm yet punchy full sound it's the warmth of a baritone but he's got this crazy range i love that bit of cry in there that was good. this phrasing is awesome he just goes through this phrase. Da, 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 da. Everything has a meaning, has a swell, has a feeling of cry on it. There is something deeper that I fear. Oh, 
like that. Die. So he closes and then puts a little bit of extra breath through. His breath balance is so controlled. So sometimes he puts a little bit more to get that breathy tone through. So if you want a breathy tone, what you need is incomplete chord closure and a little bit more breath. If you want that lovely, full, resonant tone, which he uses most of the time, then you need your vocal cords to close. You So a way to help you find that is by doing an uh, 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 uh. Do that sound. Uh, uh. And then sing into the note. If you get uh, you're not clinging on to that chord closure. So the place that you start the uh, keep that feeling going. And smoking words. nice when you get that baritone voice as someone who has a baritone voice who has worked on their range because you get a lot of tenors who are naturally can sit up there and it's real real easy for them but he's got that warmth that warmth that you only get from baritone voice however it means that you probably have to put a lot more work in to be able to sing that high so beautifully so mixed but it's possible he he shows you that it's high patience and I love singing. Oh, he's feeling it. So was that member of the audience? To be fair, I would be doing that too. I'd be like, ah, in the audience. I love the piano as well. The piano in this is great. style of music where you get this like beautiful opera-y ethereal stuff the piano the classically piano and then you get like bam here comes the metal it's great such a lovely contrast and it works so well at switching from that so you can be in this creepy place really forward place don't try and do it back here you want to be really feel like it's from here so you can see him doing ah 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 it's in there um and then he goes into the lovely free note hey very quickly so ah hey it's very difficult to switch between the two that quickly don't worry it's back It's like the two sides of Gollum. <laughs> it's like, oh, my precious. Ah. I love it.
I love these speechy bits as well. Shadow, going around the valve. about this is he's about to get everyone to sing along and I think that's awesome. I love a sing along in a song. I think it's a great way to make the audience feel involved in the whole writing of the song. But he's, whoa! That's a comfortable range for me as a girl. Men often will want to sing that, die in the octave. And it sounds so comfortable for him. It's amazing. And um, with the O, he's doing a really great thing in that he is going, whoa! It's actually more of an ah, ah, instead of Whoa, which is a bit more difficult to sing up on those high notes. You can see his cheeks are up a little bit. And he's attacking it. Oh! With that glottal sound that, uh, that we talked about earlier for throw corn closer. Tell you what, some of those audience I meet in those high notes, what's that? You can hear people go like, ah! <laughs> but it's really interesting. Um, I find that a lot of men don't get there when they're like in singing lessons, they're like, oh no. Put them at a football match and suddenly they're like, whoa! Singing these high notes easily, uh, it's, often a matter of placement and confidence and just knowing where your voice is going. When people try too hard and they get a bit nervous, then it's like, Ugh! it's so interesting. <laughs> Having said that, I also know of people trying to sing along at Iron Maiden concerts and um, literally giving themselves vocal issues that they had to be off for months, had a sore throat for months and months and months until it repaired. So be careful when singing along at sporting or music events. <laughs> I love it. That was awesome. Well, Brian, I have to admit, that was awesome. Thank you for suggesting that one. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please do like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.